Uh, welcome goes. to the Crypto with Cash podcast, episode 30. I was caught off guard then because I thought the software wasn't working. But we're here, we're hyped. My name is Duncan Morland. I am your host. I am a crypto idiot. So I am joined by Kashaya Abbasi, our local crypto expert. How are you doing, Cash? I'm all good, thank you. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, uh, I don't know, my hair. I'm growing my hair. It's quite long now. Nearly That's as long as mine. Mine's hidden all the way up there. <laughs> Yeah, you're my, you're my hair. You've got my hair goals. Um, should mention this week, one of the cryptocurrencies that you recommended has gone up two hundred and thirty percent despite us being in a crypto bear market. Uh, when did you tip this crypto cash? Can you remember? I actually don't remember, but it was more than a month ago, I'd say. All oh, right, maybe a month ago. So yeah, so within you could have made triple, triple your triple your money on this crypto within sort of about 30 days. So there are opportunities to make money in the crypto market in this bear market if you know what you're doing, which is what we try and provide for crypto with cash members. But we're not here just to shill the service today. (laughs) We've got some very important topics to talk about. I'm going to uh, run down the list and then cash you can choose. I'm not going to run down the list because my list is not coming up. So... We've got interest rates, uh, mm-hmm. we've got inflation, we've got a banking crisis, we've got a Bitcoin rally. Uh, Bitcoin has gone up a lot um, mm-hmm. relative to its recent lows. And there was one more topic which I've forgotten, Cash, can you remember? We talked about, we're going to talk about the, the Federal Reserve, interest rates, inflation in the UK and the banking crisis. Okay, so where would you like to start? Uh, let's start with the interest rates. Okay, so interest rates, I was just listening to the radio, they seem to be being predicted to go up again because inflation, as in the the cost of average goods, has gone up once again. So what's your take on this? Yeah, so it seems that inflation, despite what people were saying maybe a year ago or um, just before that, they were saying inflation is going to be transitory, so it's just going to come and go and it's going to be a thing of the past before it's even started but you know as we've seen um, inflation has been sticky it's been uh, higher than expected for quite a few months now and the federal reserve has tried to you know curb interest in 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 the ways that they can by raising interest rates Mm. Um, and you know it seems to be working you know interest uh, in the inflation rate is uh, lower than what it was a few months ago, but it's still, you know, relatively high, 6%. And I think it came back just uh, over 10% in the UK, 10.4%. It was expected to be around 9.9%, you know. Mm. Um, so inflation is still higher than is um, expected and higher than w- what most people would want. And this has actually led to our next point, which is... Um, there's a, there seems to be a banking crisis in America. You know, Silicon Valley Bank has crashed. Uh, Signature Bank has crashed. And a few others are also in trouble. Um, as, I think there was some research done. A new report came out the other day that up to 187 banks are in a similar sort of predicament as the mm-hmm. ones that have already crashed. So there seems to be a big issue. You know, the, the U.S. economy, despite what, you know, uh, the government may want people to believe is not in a as good as a position as they want it to be. You know, people are still uh, having to deal with the high cost of living and the high interest rates are affecting these sort of issues at the same time. Yeah, apparently it was tomatoes and carrots that pushed up inflation, the inflation numbers that came out today. Um, well, supply issues in Spain. Yeah, the veg uh, shortages. You know, they say that inflation is 10%, but nearly every restaurant I go to, their prices have gone up by 20 30%. Everything else yeah. is up 30 40%. We've well, um, got remember... energy prices as well. Yeah, exactly. I remember going yeah. to McDonald's, rarely, you know, even two, three years ago, mm. and a meal for me would barely come to six, seven pounds, but now every time it's over 10 pounds easily. Um mm nearly double what it was before, but inflation is coming, um, is allegedly 10%. You know, it's, it's affecting people uh, in various different ways, you know, as you mentioned, um, energy uh, energy bills and also 
just vegetables and things of that nature. From oh, from what I read as well, the inflation, higher inflation had a knock on impact on the banking crisis in the states, and the, it's different to two thousand and eight because the the crisis hasn't sort of spread globally, I guess. But mm-hmm. there's been there was like three failed banks. The first was like Silicon Valley Bank, mm-hmm. and it was a lot of tech. It's like a bank that provides for tech startups, I think. Um, yeah. That had a liquidity crisis. Um, yeah, and basically people were desperately trying to, like someone I know as well, were trying to get money out of that bank. W- weren't sure if they were going to, and then the Federal Reserve stepped in to say, we're not bailing out this bank, but don't worry about it. <laughs> so they kind of... Yeah, it's interesting because they've kind of bailed out the banks without yeah. bailing out the banks. And actually, the market has reacted positively to this news, you know, with the idea that I think there was a $25 billion uh, backstop announced for these Mm. banks. And then after more research was done as to how many banks are exposed in, you know, in this way, uh, around 200 were exposed. And now the Fed has actually announced a backstop up to $2 trillion, which is huge. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, the uh, stimulus package is all over again with mm. the Fed printing money, which is why we've seen such a huge rise in asset prices, both in the stocks and crypto mainly. Um, actually, Bitcoin has outperformed, I think, 97% of um, all stocks in the S&P 500, you know. Is that recently, you mean? Or, or Just, I think it came out like an hour ago, two hours ago, 97% of all stocks in the S&P 500. So all the companies, uh, Bitcoin has done better than, um, than those. But over what time period? Like over its over the past, I think, time. month or two months. Right. Okay. So yeah. So that's the thing that has happened. Then it feels like for the first time in a long time, Bitcoin is kind of decorrelated from the S and P five hundred because, I mean, a lot of the narrative around Bitcoin was like it's an alternative, safe haven asset to say gold or the traditional yeah. financial system. But then it kind of mirrored through this bear. So we've seen a a bear market in stocks and crypto so it was you know they were sort of correlated and mirroring each other that's sort of they've kind of diverged over the last month or few weeks i guess is that that yeah exactly and what's interesting is that these um you know this banking crisis this ongoing actually um balaji who's the uh, former chief technology officer of coinbase has come out and made a two million dollar bet with people on the internet (laughs) <laughs> He's arguing that, you know, these these back backstops that the Fed has announced and this high inflation and these increasing interest rates is actually going to lead to hyperinflation of the US dollar. And he's argued that within 90 days, you know, Bitcoin is going to hit a million dollars, which is, of course, a crazy bet um, that he's making. And he's, you know, I think he's worth nine figures and above. So a million dollars, two million dollars is not a significant amount of money to him, but it's still a lot of money to be putting um, your reputation on uh, at stake, you know? So I think what he's doing here is actually made this bet to bring attention to what's happening. You know, he's Mm. arguing that more than 200 of these banks, he's arguing that most of these banks are essentially bankrupt. They don't have the money. If there was to be a bank run, they wouldn't have near enough uh, money to, you know, honor everyone's withdrawals. Mm. So he's bringing attention to this <clears throat> issue and, you know, in a way, funneling people's attention to Bitcoin uh, at the same time. So your, what's your take on, so can you just talk us through what the crypto markets have, and Bitcoin have done over the last few weeks, you know, with this backdrop of this banking crisis and then also your take on what might happen in the coming weeks? Yeah, so... So Bitcoin, right, uh, as we speak, is at 27,500. Just a few weeks ago, it was, you know, consolidating at the $20,000 level. So as we speak, Bitcoin is up around 36, 37% in just a few weeks. And this is one of the largest rallies it's had in several months, you know. And this comes off the back of, sort of in a way, seller exhaustion. Anyone who had Bitcoin or had crypto has had ample time to sell. You know, they've been selling over the past year or so. Mm. So now it's a time for 
you know, people to force to step back in and start buying and pushing prices up because it's essentially those who wanted to sell have sold and no one else is going to sell. Um, so, yeah, we've had a huge rally and then we've had this bet being made. We've also had banking crisis and also the Fed coming out and say, OK, we're, we're willing to put up to two trillion dollars mm. to essentially uh, honor all these depositors and uh, anyone who wants to withdraw is free to do so, you know. <clears throat> So there's all of these uh, factors, in a way, happening at the same time. And Bitcoin's done very well to uh, steal the narrative, in a way, by by being a genuine alternative to what's happening. So if banks don't have the money that you've deposited, that same thing won't happen if you were to hold Bitcoin, because you are mm. in charge of your own Bitcoin, you know? So he's argued, Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. Hyperinflation is, is going to happen to the US dollar within the next 90 days. So buy Bitcoin and take it off exchanges and just wait and see what happens. <clears throat> when, he's, when he's talking about hyperinflation, has he put that in context? Because, um, you know, there's like a the classic case in Germany. I don't know how many, I'm, I'm rubbish with any kind of history, but it was, you know, the idea was like it, the money became so worthless that it was just paper in the streets that was being sweeped up. So is he making those kind of claims or what, what, as he's yes, he's been going what for... hyperinflation means? To... Yeah. I mean, he's been going, to, um, he's been doing loads of different podcasts since making that tweet a couple of days ago. And he's also clarified that, you know, he's not bringing out a book. Is he? Is this why he's a... No, I think he's made more than enough money to be doing that. Yeah. He's He's not trying to sell anything, which is, which is interesting, which is, again, why it seems that he's putting his reputation at stake here mm. as opposed to anything else. <clears throat> so he's uh, made this call and it's caught the attention of everyone. I mean, the reason we're talking about it right, right now is because he's he's made that tweet, he's made that bet. So he's, he's successfully directed a lot of attention to Bitcoin. Um, and at the same time, he's also mentioned in different podcasts that hyperinflation happens at a faster rate than people can imagine so he i don't recall the the specific country name but just the podcast i was listening to just earlier today he mentioned how within 60 days a country that he he was speaking to i think it might have been venezuela it went from oh okay we have a normal currency within 60 days there was hyperinflation everywhere mm. um so he can he, he was saying how it could happen as fast as that you know it's highly unlikely he was asked to come up with ideas as to why it, his bet could not work out. And he mm. said, I still believe it's going to happen. But the only thing I'll say is perhaps it doesn't happen within 90 days. Perhaps the timeline 90, is off, 90 but years. it's still going to happen. <laughs> um, so another thing that I was thinking when you were talking about um, the Bitcoin price is when the markets were coming down last year, um, there was a a support level it was around thirty thousand dollars so if bitcoin yeah. sort of hit about 28 and we see it carry on carry on going up over the next few months i guess um mm -hmm. it's going to hit that ceiling and it that's probably quite a hard ceiling for it to get through is that do you think or yes exactly so as we're below 30 and thirty thousand before was the support level and it held i think on one two three four five six six seven eight occasions so it's going to be very strong uh, resistance for it to push through. Mm. I mean, I think it all depends on whether um, the Fed continues hiking interest rates and whether inflation keeps coming down or not. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's going to take a few months for it to resolve. Right now, uh, it seems to be, you know, just be be below the $30,000 level. So we'll see how it performs if it gets to the 30K zone. Um, if it pushes through, then that means, you know, that's very that's a very strong indication that, you know, the bear market, the worst is definitely over and we're going to see some consolidation before we push higher. I want, and if I guess uh, my, I'm wondering whether, you know, the, the stock market follows or if we do see it continue to sort of like this decorrelation between the two of them. Because um, then there may be a lot then. Yeah, maybe a lot of the narratives around Bitcoin as an alternative uh, source of value and that kind of thing get a bit more legitimized. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Up until recently, yeah, as you mentioned, there was a high, um, huge correlation between stocks and crypto. But <clears throat> recently, Bitcoins have been outperforming 
the S and P five hundred and <clears throat> many other companies. So, I'll have to see what happens. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about the coin that you recommended to Crypto with Cash uh, members. So, Crypto with yeah. Cash is uh, your crypto service where you recommend uh, cryptocurrencies. You provide a write up every two weeks as a community. Um, you do sort of uh, regular sort of quarterly reviews on the portfolio and stuff. So you recommended a certain cryptocurrency, and I won't name it because it's um, it's still a buy, isn't it, at the moment for members? Yeah. So you recommended this just over a month ago, is that right? Uh, actually, looking back, it was March 10th. March 10th, okay. And we're, all right, so 12 days ago. <laughs> yeah, around 12 days, it's done 230%, which is really good to see. Okay. And what... Um, what what drew you to this coin? Like, why did you sort of look at it? So I feel like there's a narrative uh, within crypto right now that China and Asia in general is opening up more to crypto. Um, you know, China has one of the largest, if not the largest population on earth. And in the past, they've been a bit strict when it comes to crypto. You know, they've banned uh, mining in the past mm. but if you're part of these crypto communities you see that chinese people <clears throat> are hugely involved in the crypto markets i, I remember watching this uh, uh it was people buying domain names on um, solana and yeah. a lot of the domain names being registered were just chinese uh, chinese words and letters so and then when you go on these telegram groups and discord groups there's huge communities of chinese people um, involved in the markets despite crypto unofficially being banned or officially mm. being banned there. Um, and there's this narrative now that China's slowly opening up to crypto. I mean, Hong Kong's becoming, uh, in a way, a crypto hub again. Uh, I think over 200 companies have applied to open up uh, offices in Hong Kong recently in the past two, three months, which yeah. is huge. Um, and, you know, the digital yuan is becoming increasingly popular as well. In Shenzhen and Hong Kong as well. What's the digital yuan? So it's the it, it's this they're doing a test pilot. Uh, they're, they're doing a uh, pilot scheme of the Chinese digital um, currency. So this is like a central bank issued yes. uh, currency. Yes, and it's becoming increasingly popular um, in these you know new new cities like Shenzhen. I think it's one of the most modern cities in the world. It's it's one of the first cities where new technology is um, tried out. And yes, yeah, doing quite well, and there's huge volume coming in from these sort of uh, from the Chinese and um, a Asian uh, markets. Uh, this project in particular has actually got close ties, it seems, to the Chinese government, and they've made an active investment in this project. So for the past few days, it's been the best performing uh, crypto in the market. Huge volume coming in, I think over a billion dollars per day. And it's just been sh shooting the price of the uh, token up, which is why we've seen it go up nearly two, three X, you know, mm. in just 10, so 12 days. It's it's banned. So it, crypto is officially banned in China. Yeah? Did you say, is that still the case? So the thing is, it, there's the different is investing in. <laughs> yeah. So there's different, uh, you know, I feel like there's, it's very difficult to get accurate information yeah, about sure. China in western media outlet uh, western media outlets so speaking to my chinese friends they're, they're constantly trading um right. they're buying and selling bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, but it's mining specifically that's banned so all of these miners some still remain in the country of course maybe secretly but a lot of them have moved to it was countries like kazakhstan and, oh exactly yeah sorry kazakhstan yeah not yeah um but trading seems to be ongoing and Hong Kong, yet yeah, again, uh, the government's actively inviting these crypto companies to come back and it's essentially becoming a hub. <clears throat> so, so we'll have to wait and see just how big and how, how much uh, crypto activity is authorized in the country. But so far, it seems to be going in the right direction. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, so that we did a we did a live sort of event over just after Christmas, I think that was yeah. called why buy now um you know what you know why buy cryptocurrency right now and this is an example of that because you can still make you know uh triple digit gains in in this bear market if you if you know what you're doing is there i'm 
are there any other Chinese focused um, cryptos in the portfolio at the moment? And are, are there any that you've got your eye on that might be added soon? Nothing com that comes to mind, but there seems to be, you know, narratives seem to be that Arabs are starting to get into crypto. You know, Dubai has become uh, an almost de facto hub for crypto. Um, a lot of these companies are setting up their offices in Dubai as well. Mm. Um, uh, so there's this sort of idea that, you know, Arab money is going to start entering the markets as well. You know, the uh, um, Americans have already bought, they've already bought what they want. Um, there's still a lot of an innovation happening there, but it's just that there's new money. Uh, it seems like it's mm. going to come from Asia uh, mainly. Well, that's, I guess that's a, good point isn't it like the especially if you had a lot of people with buy at the top of the last bull market who are sitting on sitting on crypto investments waiting for it to go back up um you yeah. need new money to come in well the easiest way for the markets to go back up is for new money to come in it could be the same people investing more because they regain confidence but complete, yeah. but a completely new demographic or nation coming in and investing more is you know seems like an obvious way to add vo uh, volume and yeah it's interesting you mentioned that because up until maybe a couple months ago you know there were these new coins popping up and doing well but the overall total market cap of crypto was staying the same which right. meant that you know it's just one money uh, from one side going to another so it's not new money coming in but yeah but the past few weeks and months i would say uh, the total market cap has started rising again implying that new money's started coming in and uh, going back to the inflation issue, you know, the West, uh, Europe, America, uh, you know, they're facing a lot of uh, inflation problems. Whereas Saudi Arabia and China, I think they're on 1.8%, 2%, some of the lowest mm. in the world. So their economy seems to be doing a lot better than those in the West, which is, again, why a lot of people believe that new money is going to come from Asia as opposed to, you know, these Western nations. I guess if they're looking for a yeah, place to... If they've got a low inflation environment and they're looking for assets to buy and crypto is exactly. you know, an opportunity for them, it makes sense. Um, I've got a slightly related question. So if we are sort of coming, I guess my question is like, uh, what do you have an inkling of what the next sort of major narrative, I think I've asked you this before, major narrative could be in the next bull market? Like the last one we had, I think DeFi was, you know, decentralized finance was a huge thing um that's not gone away you know we, maybe it's more important than ever with the collapse of some centralized crypto exchanges you know yeah. Sam, Sam Bankman freed saga last year yeah. um you know there's decentralized exchanges and and all that kind of thing but is there anything that's sort of coming up on your radar or, or is it just this, the involvement of different nations more in crypto is that maybe a driving force i think that is um that is one um, I think we're going to see a lot more focus on Bitcoin, especially with what's going on in the banks and with, <clears throat> you know, these <clears throat> these bets being made about the price of Bitcoin mm. within 90 days. And also, there seems to be new, new protocols prop, popping up, allowing decentralized applications and protocols to run on Bitcoin, which was previously <clears throat> only uh, possible on Ethereum. Okay, yeah, because that's interesting. It's quite so interesting to see, yeah. So that's... Is that stuff like, well, there's the Lightning Network, but there was also, there was a few things that I read about last year, but they felt like the Lightning Network felt advanced and like people were using it. But there was, and the other, the other stuff that was like, oh, it could maybe be like Ethereum or have some use cases like Ethereum. Yeah, so. It seemed a long way off or just not sort of like Ethereum. Yeah, so uh, as we're seeing, <clears throat> El Salvador, for example, they're using the Lightning Network to take payments for coffees and uh, different, right. different shops. Yeah. But now we're seeing NFTs and different decentralized applications actually appearing on Bitcoin in right. different ways. Yeah. And more, uh, it's, it's less sophisticated than it looks on Ethereum. Um, but we are seeing more innovation on Bitcoin being done, which is always good to see. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize you could do that at all on, on the Bitcoin network. So. Um. Okay, is there so we've covered quite an array of topics there, I think, for the Crypto with Cash Cast episode number thirty. Um I was gonna say that's my age, but that has not been my age for a while now. 
Um, is there anything you want to finish on cash or do you feel like we have done the crypto space justice for another i, I think we've, we've, we've covered a wide range of topics i think we've covered the main ones we're seeing some more positive price um, action in the markets which is always welcome um hopefully you know i don't think we're out of the woods just yet you know inflation is still high mm. and um interest rates inflation is still high and interest rates are still um being hiked on on a monthly basis we'll have to see what happens in the next meeting um if there is a pause on these hikes um then we may see more att- attention coming to the crypto markets again and the stock markets and uh, generally speaking some positive developments um in the innovation side of things for bitcoin as well yeah okay well, that's a good summary plus uh the chance for triple digit gains. Uh, if you're interested in joining Crypto with Cash, there'll be a link below uh, the YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, as always, we appreciate any likes uh, and subscribe if you want more of this. And we're always game to answer any questions or talk about any topics that anyone wants us to cover. And so let us know in the com- comments or drop us an email. There'll be a link in and around the podcast. Um, Cash, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. You've been great as always. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, don't know why, but maybe, it, yeah, <laughs> I'll take the compliment. <laughs> no, you've been asking great questions. And in, in your knowledge, you, you, you say you don't know anything about crypto, but you <laughs> certainly do. It's just osmosis from like writing and talking about it for since 2018. So that's what, like five years now, isn't it? That's yeah, long good stuff. Time, yeah. And that wasn't even early. Like if you think, when was it the Bitcoin kind of, like 2009 or something yeah 2008 2009 yeah so still i mean it's still like earlier than most i would say i think most people entered crypto in 2021 right um, yeah tail tail end of uh, 2021 yeah so um yeah earlier than most yeah (laughs) early adopter that's my uh that's my new uh slogan earlier than my my, i mean it's good in some contexts not in others (laughs) Right, on that note, Cash, (laughs) Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for anyone who has listened. And we shall talk again on the next Crypto with Cash podcast. Awesome. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.